Greetings, and welcome to Browns Point United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Katie Klosterman, and it is my joy to welcome you to worship. Today, we are blessed to hear from Chris Ray, a lay leader in our congregation who is a very gifted preacher and has really discerned and reflected on what does it mean that God comes to us as we are living in this pandemic behind locked doors. How have you discovered God's presence as you are trying to stay quarantined at home? How are you experiencing God coming to you as you are isolating? For we know Jesus came to the disciples when they were locked uh, up in the upper room after Jesus had been crucified and Jesus came to them and offered them peace. How is God offering you peace this day? So let us explore together as we worship our God who always finds us no matter what we're locked behind. And we're so glad you could join us for worship. Join me in the call to worship. God, we need your help during this pandemic as we are forced into isolation and behind closed doors. God, come to us in lockdown. We visit with loved ones through the phone and computer. God, teach us to zoom in and zoom out. We are on a roller coaster of emotions, including worry, anxiety, and uncertainty. God, send us the peace that your son came to earth to offer to all. Please join in our opening hymn Gather us in. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space, our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of the day. in the lost and forsaken gather us in the blind and the lame call to us, us now and we shall awaken we shall arise at the sound of our name we are the young our lives are a mystery we are the old who yearn for your face we have been sung throughout all Call to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty. Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom, now is the day. in and hold us forever gather us in and make us 
your own. Gather us in all peoples together, fire of love in our flesh and our bones. Let us pray. O oh God, you come to us in unexpected places, in isolation, behind closed doors, in video chats with friends and telephone conversations with loved ones. You come bringing us peace where there is no peace. You come bringing us hope when everything seems hopeless. You come bringing us courage when we are afraid. Come and be among us now in every place where you are, where we are. Open our eyes to see you. Open our hearts to know you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hello, I'm Daryl Pelly. I've been choir director at Browns Point United Methodist Church for about 39 years. Today, it's my honor to present a music scholarship to one of our youth. For those who may not know, there is a minor memorial fund at Browns Point United Methodist Church established by the parents of Clark Minor. Clark was a youth who had been active in our church, but tragically lost his life as a result of a traffic accident. Part of that memorial fund provides for a scholarship for graduating seniors from Stadium High School who are active musicians. On behalf of the whole church and the memorial fund committee, we would like to present a scholarship of $250 to Brett Anton. Brett, we're awarding you this scholarship for your incredible music abilities in trumpet and the ways you have blessed and enhanced worship at Browns Point United Methodist Church. We appreciate how you play at Christmas and Easter and other times through the year. Thank you for stepping up during this pandemic and blessing us with your gift of music. It truly has brought joy to us all who watch you play. Congratulations, Brett, on your graduation from Stadium High School and acceptance to the University of Washington.
little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. We're really excited uh, because Kaylin is nine months old. You're such a big girl, huh? Whoa, nine months, right? You know, I know. Can you believe it? Time has gone by so fast and getting so big. She's still uh, five months corrected, but we're excited that she's nine months old. How did that happen? I know that uh, as we're living through this pandemic and as we're talking about God in lockdown, it's been hard and we miss all of you and we wish you could hold her and love on her. Um, as you, then you can experience the joy of hanging out with her, huh? Because you're so much fun. But we know that um, even while we can't do that, it is a great act of love on your part uh, to love her um, and to keep distance so that she can stay safe and healthy and you can stay safe and healthy. And that's the beauty of God in this, I think, is that God reminds us that we are all doing our best to take care of each other. Um, and the greatest act of loving our neighbor is to be able to safely keep our distance and hold on to hope that one day you will all get to hold her and love on her and tell her how beautiful she is and how cute she is and what a miracle she is huh yeah you are so remember that every act you're doing is an act of love and that god is actively coming to you yeah in this time Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Let us pray. Holy God, by your spirit, reveal your radical, surprising love. Come to us through your holy word and let us hear what you are saying. Amen. Our gospel lesson today is John chapter 20, verses 19 through 30. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven then. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, 
I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In early February, I took a flight from SeaTac to the San Jose International Airport, jumped in an Uber for the ride up to Scotts Valley, eventually ending up at a beautiful site that used to be a college, but now it is a retreat center. I reserved a spot months previous because the event was often sold out. I counted myself lucky to even get in. I paid good money for the travel and for the event, and what was it I was paying for? the opportunity to be locked down in silence for a week, a silent meditation retreat with 75 other like-minded persons. No talking, not even at meals. And remember, I wasn't paid for this or forced to do it, I paid them. And within six weeks, I was again isolated in a restricted area and it didn't cost me anything. Now, to be sure, it's not exactly the same, in California, we were about 75 people all gathered in a beautiful facility. So that, of course, is not currently possible. But the idea of getting away from it all to spend a week in silence, well, that is now available 24-7 for free, sort of. I learned the value of often comes from the context or the perspective you bring to an activity. In our gospel reading, the disciples were in a crisis mode, huddled behind a locked door in fear for their survival. And that sounds oddly familiar, doesn't it? I know it is not a perfect analogy. At this point, they had been locked down just for days, not months, but still their entire world had been upended. Jesus had been killed and not by accident in a manner that seemed to put anyone associated with him at risk. The disciples were behind closed doors then, not by choice, but because of external events. The effect on their world was as potentially devastating as what we face now. They feared for their lives. They couldn't go out. They couldn't express their faith, and they faced an uncertain future without Jesus physically present to lead them. So I think there is something here we can use. Without Jesus, what did any of this mean? Where would the energy, the power to fuel this movement come from? So what we need to do is put it into context and perspective. You know something about what happened to the disciples over the next several days. You know about the resurrection. You may not know about everything, that everything did not change automatically overnight after the resurrection. The church was in a rolling lockdown for almost 300 years. Not all the time, not in every location. It often depended on the specific Roman emperor and some of the leaders were much worse than others. But there were intense periods of persecution, some documented in Acts and the Pauline letters and some that took place years later. There were many times and places throughout the Mediterranean world when Christians were not allowed to gather publicly for worship. In particular, communion and baptism were outlawed, and the Christian communities had to protect themselves by holding these observances in secret. 300 years, that is a long-term view for sure. 
what we do know is that at the end of that time period, the new faith had spread across the entire known world. It was hard to see that from a locked room. But when we look at the longer view, it does give us perspective. There are two ways to get perspective on a situation. Zoom out and zoom in. Today, I will focus mostly on zooming out. But by zooming out, I don't mean an intellectual or head-only type of approach. I'm talking about a specific skill, a way of reshaping your focus, maybe even something that will lead to starting over. This is a tool that you can use to shift your perspective when your thinking goes awry. Zooming out is about incorporating this shift in thinking into how you actually live your life. Life seems to follow a natural flow of expansion and contraction. When we are challenged, it is easy to get caught up into the thinking that it is only contraction. The shift I'm talking about opens yourself to the expansiveness of the Holy Spirit, opening up yourself to see the world from the Spirit's non-finite perspective. There are different ways to do this. It can start with a historical perspective, it can start with a scientific observation. It can start with a personal perspective. You can do it almost anywhere at any time. You can even do it while walking the dog. Listen to the experience of my friend, Aaron. He said that he had been living mostly a withdrawn and introverted life since the isolation because of the pandemic. He still had a job. He was thankful for that. He was working from home, taking care of his family, and calling his mother once a day to check on her. But he was out of contact with almost everyone else that, is, that had been important in his life. Then one day, his son pulled him into watching the launch of the Dragon spacecraft, the first time a civilian rocket had been launched into space. His son was totally involved with all the details of the launch and the technology and the adventure of the whole thing. And Aaron remembered a conversation he and I had had years ago about how when he was growing up, I was a huge fan of the early astronauts and the Apollo launches that eventually landed the U.S. on the moon. So he called me. He told me the story about how he had been so focused on himself and just doing his job and getting through the day that he literally had withdrawn from everything else, not just physically because he couldn't get out, but also mentally and psychologically. Part of his routine, he told me, was to get up early every morning, grab the leash, and take his dog out for his morning constitutional. When he would take these walks, he always had his head down, focused on the ground, never looked up. He just watched the dog, looked at the ground. When the dog was ready to go back inside, he took him back inside. And what he remembers is that he was always looking down. One day, and he doesn't know what prompted it, he raised his head and looked up at the early morning sky. And in that instant, he realized that he had been living his recent life literally and metaphorically looking down. He had been ignoring any reality other than what was on the ground in front of his feet. When he looked up, he saw the tops of the trees, he saw the blue sky, and he instantly got a different perspective. He felt more open, aware, and alive. And for Aaron, it began a time of spiritual exploration which added meaning and the sense of peace to his life. Now the question is, all of that, or the issue is, all of that came from the physical change, from looking down to looking up. There may be some scientific reason for why looking down keeps us contracted and isolated, but I know there's some practical truth to it. As I said, there are lots of ways to zoom out. This story actually included more than one, included two of them. The first was what his son was doing paying attention to something bigger than himself and his own challenges by following the rocket launch. The second was when Aaron physically looked up when he was out walking his dog. Now here's the interesting thing. Zooming out is not the only way to change our perspective. In fact, sometimes we need the exact opposite of that. We need to learn how to zoom in, but we'll talk about that at another time. 
We need to move now into thinking about our theology, and we need to think about adult theology. Adult theology has to be able to withstand reality. Not just what we want to happen, but what is actually happening around us. That means we have to pay attention to reality and to what is happening around us. One of the things I have to remind myself about is that the world isn't set up for my time schedule. We catch ourselves thinking, well, this situation isn't fair to me. I was going to get married this year. I was going to start college this year. I was going to move to Hawaii. I just experienced a profound loss last year, and now this? Or I just got over a physical problem, and I was all ready to start living my life more fully again. There are many, many ways to look at what's happening around us. But we need to update our theology. How do you do that? You let life be your spiritual teacher. You look for the spirit in the experience of life itself. Do you know the difference between a maze and a labyrinth? A maze is designed to deceive. Your goal is to find a way out, but the maze designer wants to keep you in that maze as long as possible. That's the fun of it. The paths, the various turns are opportunities, possible avenues of escape, but repeatedly you encounter dead ends. A well-designed maze is frustrating and self-defeating, deceiving you with the illusion of progress. Yet some early Christians built a pattern something like a maze into the floor of their churches. These patterns are called labyrinths and at a quick glance might cause you to think of them as a maze. But there are differences. Labyrinths are mostly circular, no tall rows of corn to obscure the way. And like a maze, the path to the goal is not direct, but unlike a maze, The labyrinth is unicursal, a strange sounding word that only means there's just one way to the center. Yes, there are frustrations. The path may appear to lead you away from the goal temporarily. However, if you follow the path, letting go of the very idea of getting somewhere, you will eventually get to the center. Getting lost in a labyrinth is not really possible if you surrender to the path. It is easy sometimes when life gets challenging to think of yourself as trapped in a maze with no way out. If you can think of your situation as a labyrinth instead of a maze, you can follow the path to the center. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Wind, wind on the sea. You 
Let us pray now, coming together with the prayers that we have on our hearts, whether those are prayers of joy, prayers of gratitude, prayers of sorrow, prayers of concern. All of them are valid, and all of them are important to God, and they're important to us as a community of faith. So let us pray together, wherever we are, knowing that God hears our prayers. Living God, giver of life, Hear us as we pray. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for the church, especially that it would work for racial equality and seek to end racism and oppression in all of its forms. Let your church be a living sign of the woundedness and healing of Christ, sharing the gift of forgiveness and the gospel of reconciliation. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for the earth. Help us to see the scars of death that mark your good creation and to seek the blessing of life that you offer to all your creatures. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for all nations, especially Beirut, Lebanon. Bring them healing Bring them change, bring them restoration. O Lord, show us how good and pleasant it is when people live together in unity and anoint us with your wisdom so that we may seek the ways of your life. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for this community, especially for all students, teachers, and staff preparing to return to school. We pray for the parents and grandparents as they seek to find a way for everyone to learn in the best and safest way possible. Also, give us, Browns Point United Methodist Church, a vision of the common good, not clinging to our own possessions, but seeking the fullness of life for all as a testimony to the life and resurrection of Christ. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send your spirit of peace. We pray for our loved ones, especially those who are battling cancer, COVID-19, or other illnesses. We also pray for all who have lost loved ones in this particular season. We pray for all who are living with fear, anxiety, and depression because of this pandemic. Be with us in the roller coaster of emotions we feel, O oh Lord as we try to do our best to take care of one another. 
and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Be near those who walk in darkness and lead us all into Christ's light so that our fellowship may be true and our joy may be complete. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send your spirit of peace. By the blessing of your spirit, help us to live as we pray so that the world may come to know the gift of life in Christ our Lord. And the people of God said, Amen. At this time, we bring our offerings to God so that we can be the hands and feet of Christ here in this place, in our mission field, and throughout the world. We are so grateful for the gifts that you've already shared with our church, the ways that you mail in your offering here, or have your bank send it for you, or the ways that you go online at brownspointchurch.org to make an online gift. We just want to say thank you. It's a testimony to your faith in God. It's a testimony for your love for your neighbor. And so may we always give generously, for we know a generous God who always finds us wherever we are, especially when we're locked behind doors. For God is setting us free always. And for that, we're ever thankful. So let us bring our gifts now. thanksgiving. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for light and life and love, 
above all the presence of the living Lord among us. By your spirit who breathes within us, strengthen our faith, use our gifts, and work to bear witness to Christ's peace, in whose name we pray. Amen. Because the body of Christ is inclusive, we know that God's table of grace and fellowship extends into our homes or wherever we are worshiping today. As you are able, please bring forward your own elements, the gifts of the bread and the cup, whether that is the actual Hawaiian loaf and grape juice or something else that is different. And that's okay because we know that God can take the most ordinary of items and transform them into elements, into elements of God's grace and elements of God's mercy and love. So let us prepare our tables because we celebrate that God can reach us wherever we're at, even if we can't be around this table together as we long to do. And trust me, I miss you all and I wish we could do this together. But know that I'm with you. God is with us, and so is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So let us prepare. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. So now, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name as we join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his whole life through his service, his suffering, death, and resurrection. You, God, gave birth to your church. You deliver us from slavery to sin and death and make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, broken for you, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you, O God, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on each and every one of us, wherever we are gathered this day. And pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts so that they become the bread and cup offered not only for us, but for the entire world, each and every child of God. For no one is excluded from your bread and cup. Make us one with Christ and one with each other and one with the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, let us partake of the bread and the cup. Share it with those you're with, or share it with yourself. As we say together, the body of Christ. 
the blood of Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, once more you nourish us. You come to us in the midst of our fears, in the midst of our worries, that have us locked up tight. But Lord, you know too that we're behind closed doors for another reason. Because we are trying to love our neighbor as your son taught us to love. Lord, help us to find new ways to connect with one another, to stay in touch with friends, to reach out when we're struggling and having a hard time with this new normal. But just because we're locked inside and isolated from one another, remind us that we're never isolated from you for not even a pandemic can separate us from your love. So help us to continue to hold perspective, to know that you are our God who's actively working in our world to save us from this terrible pandemic. You're working through scientists. You're working through first responders, nurses, doctors, respiratory therapists, scientists, even those who are caring for those we've lost. For that, oh God, we are eternally grateful. Remind us that you are always connecting us to one another and helping us to break free from our fear, our worries, and our anxieties. We always want to say thank you for the gift of your son who taught us how much you love us and who also told us and taught us how to love one another. And the people of God said, Amen. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely? long for heaven and home. When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know Whenever I am 
sighing when hope within me dies I draw the closer to him from care he sets me free his eyes on the sparrow and I know I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, and his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on Go in peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and know that God is coming to you in the midst of this lockdown. God is coming to you to set you free, to help you find a new perspective, to remind you that nothing can separate you from the love of God and share that good news with everyone you meet. And the people of God said, Amen.